So you've just bought Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. I don't blame you. There was a lot of hype and marketing behind this game. Entire Nintendo Directs were dedicated to it. Maybe you have never played Smash before. Maybe you have played it once or twice at a friend's house. Maybe you have played other fighting games, but not this game. And so you may have bought this game, hoping to have instant fun thinking it's as accessible as Mario Kart. But then found out that it isn't. Have no fear. This video will get you prepared mentally and mechanically to play this game. First, you must be mentally and spiritually prepared. What is the appeal of Smash? Why do people like the series? Why has it sold so much? Why do people play it competitively? The most readily apparent appeal of Smash is of course the roster. You have a ton of different characters from all over the Nintendo universe, as well as the video game universe in general. If you have a favorite video game character, he or she is probably in this game. Smash Brothers is an analog fighting game. What do I mean by this? In most other fighting games, you can use the analog stick for movement, but the underlying mechanics do not require it and digital input is optimal. For example, in Street Fighter, if you want to dash, you double tap forward. In Smash, you just quickly flick the stick forward. If you want to walk slowly, you can do so as well and how quickly and how far you flick the stick will translate to your on-screen movement. What is easier and faster, double tapping forward or just flicking the stick with one motion? I think flicking the stick is much easier and more intuitive. In Dragon Ball Fighters, you have two jumps, a regular jump which you can use in the air to do a double jump and a high jump. To do a high jump, you have to quickly press down and then up. In Smash, to do the equivalent of a high jump, also known as a full hop, all you need to do is hold the jump button and if you want to do a regular jump, called a short hop, just tap the jump button and let go as fast as possible. To be fair, the short hop is harder to do than a full hop. Again, which is easier and more intuitive? Pressing down and then up, or just holding the jump button? I think it's holding the jump button. The bottom line is that movement in Smash feels very fluid and intuitive and allows for more creative freedom than other fighting games. The entire premise of the series was basically to make fighting games more accessible by making controller inputs easier while trying to keep the mind games and strategy of the fighting game genre intact. Who is the main protagonist of the Street Fighter series? It's Ryu. What are his signature moves? The Hadoken or Fireball and Shoryuken or Dragon Punch. To do a Hadoken, you have to do a quarter circle forward motion on your D-pad or stick and then press a punch button. The main protagonist of Smash and Nintendo in general would arguably be Mario. He also can throw a fireball, but to do it, all you need to do is press the special move button without a direction. If you want to do a Shoryuken in Street Fighter, you have to press forward, down, then the diagonal between forward and down, and then a punch button. Mario can do a move that is similar to a Shoryuken, but to do it, all you need to do is press the special move button at the same time as up on your controller. Which is easier? I think you know the answer by now. I'm not saying easier is always better. It is very satisfying and rewarding to pull off difficult things, both in video games and in life. This is why people drive stick or play the piano. But sometimes you just want to take the mechanics out of the equation and get to the gooey mental center. This is what Smash is all about. In traditional fighting games like Street Fighter, jumping is highly punishable and discouraged. But in Smash, jumping is a major part of the game. It is still punishable, but with the bigger fighting arenas, along with platforms and offstage areas, it is essential to master. Street Fighter and Smash evolved from different genres of games. Street Fighter was an evolution of the beat-em-up genre also known as brawlers or belt scrollers, where you walk to the right and beat people up. There are usually no platforms in beat-em-ups, and you usually had three hit combos and you could jump only to attack and not to traverse platforms. Smash is the evolution of the 2D platformer, where you can jump on platforms, hit enemies, and fall into bottomless pits, whereas in beat-em-ups the goal is to position your character at the right spot to do the most damage to your opponent, there's a greater sense of freedom of movement in 2D platformers. If you think about it, 
Smash is kind of like an anime fighting game, not in how it looks, but in how battles play out. Battles in Smash are kind of like epic battles in anime like Dragon Ball. Like in Dragon Ball, battles in Smash are not only fought on the ground, but in the air. Also when someone hits someone else, he or she goes flying. The same thing happens in Smash, and just like in Dragon Ball, the more damaged an opponent is, the farther he or she goes flying. That's what the numbers are all about. What do the percents mean in Smash? Nintendo always wants to be different and special. And so instead of a bar that depletes as you take damage, Smash has a number that goes up. The higher the number is, the farther that character will go flying after he or she is attacked. It's viscerally satisfying to hit someone and see him or her flying away. This is also one of the reasons why Smash is so fun to play and watch. Doesn't matter how big your percent is, there's always a chance that you can come back and win the game. It is similar to boxing, where it's not just about hitting your opponent as much as possible, but how hard you hit your opponent and knocking him or her out. The right punch at the right time and at the right place might end the boxing match early. It's the same thing in Smash. Smash is also kind of like 3D fighting games like Virtual Fighter and Soul Calibur. In that you can win by knocking your opponent out of the ring. Technically, you can win without doing any damage to your opponent. This is part of the unpredictable quality of Smash that people like. It is both exhilarating and tense to play and watch. People might say that this is a fun party game, and it is. You can play it as shallowly or as deeply as possible. There is no shame in any way you play, whether you play with a bunch of your friends without items on, or you play one versus one and try hard to be the very best, like no one ever was. It is fun either way. However you decide to play, you should learn the fundamentals of the game. Basically, you have two attack buttons, one for normal attacks and one for special attacks. Normal attacks are usually attacks made with a character's own physical body. They usually come out quicker, and you will want to do these more than special attacks in general. Special attacks usually include things like projectiles, recovery moves, and other cool or creative moves unique to that character. You have four normal attacks. Basically, you use the attack button either by itself or in combination with one of the four cardinal directions on your control stick. Neutral attack, which is done by pressing the attack button with no direction on the stick. Forward tilt, pressing the attack button with a light forward push on the stick. Down tilt, attack button with a light down push on the stick. Up tilt, attack button with a light up push on the stick. If you use normal attacks in the air, they change. If you use a normal attack in the air without a direction, it's called a neutral air. Usually neutral airs come out quickly and have high priority. They are usually good attacks to approach your opponent with. If you use a normal attack in the air while pressing or holding forward, it's called a forward air. Many forward airs have a lot of launching power or the power to send your opponent flying. If you use a normal attack in the air while pressing or holding back, it's called a back air. Many back airs have more range than forward airs and are also good for approaching. If you use a normal attack in the air while pressing or holding down, it's called a down air. Many down airs can spike your opponent downward, which can lead to early KOs. If you use a normal attack in the air while pressing or holding up, it's called an up air. Many up airs can juggle your opponent in the air or finish combos. Like normal attacks, you have four special moves. Neutral special, special move button with no direction on the stick. Forward special, special move button and forward at the same time. Down special, special move button and down at the same time. And up special, special move button and up at the same time. These are usually moves that send you upwards and can help you return to the stage. Smash attacks usually have a lot of launching power. In other words, at high percents, connecting with the smash attack will likely KO your opponent. By default, smash attacks are mapped to the right analog stick. So, for example, you can actually just tilt the right stick forward for a forward smash. You can also press both the normal attack and special attack buttons at the same time to do a smash attack. However, if you want to assign the right stick to tilt attacks, you should learn how to do smash attacks the old-fashioned way. To do a smash attack, you must flick this left stick and press the normal attack button at the same time. Flick the stick in a cardinal direction very quickly and completely. Go all the way to the edge or gate of the stick until you hear an audible click. You have three smash attacks. 
forward smash, normal attack button with a fast flick forward or back on the stick, down smash, attack button with a fast flick down on the stick, and up smash, attack button with a fast flick up on the stick. For jumping, most characters have two jumps. Some characters, like Kirby, have more jumps. If you get knocked off the stage, you can come back. You will lose one jump, so you can't double jump after you have been knocked away. But you can use your available jump, and if necessary, use your up special, which usually gives you a lot of upward mobility. For movement, depending on how fast and hard you flick your stick, you can walk, run, or dash. For defense in other fighting games, you hold back, or diagonally down and back. But in Smash, like Mortal Kombat, there was a block button, or a shield in this case. At its maximum power, a shield covers all attacks whether it's from in front of you, behind, above, or below. With the shield button held down, if you press right or left, you can roll. If you press down while shielding, you can dodge in place, called a spot dodge. If you press the shield button in the air, you are invulnerable for a few frames. If you press the direction while pressing the shield button in midair, you can dodge in that direction. If you smash your control stick as if you were doing a smash attack, you will dash. If you attack while dashing, you will do a dash attack. You can grab your opponent as well. This is great if he or she is shielding a lot. You can grab him or her by either pressing the throw button or pressing shield plus normal attack at the same time. You can also be holding shield and then press the normal attack button as well. Then you can throw him or her forward, down, back, or up. Each throw has a different use. Some may be better for KOs, and some may be better for damage. If you play with items on, you will want to know how to pick them up, what to do with them, and how to use them. To pick up an item on the ground, go up to it and press the normal attack button. You can also grab items by dash attacking, air dodging into them, or even doing an aerial attack on top of them. To use an item you have picked up, press the normal attack button once again. Projectile items like ray guns will usually fire all its shots before it can throw it. But you can throw any item at any time by pressing the throw button and a direction, even ray guns. If you just want to drop an item, jump and press the throw button without a direction. It will fall straight down. There are a ton of items in the game, so if you want to know what each of them does, you can look them up by going to Vault, then Tips, and then Items. I hope you learned something, and now don't regret your purchase. For more advanced tips, check out some of the YouTubers in the description below. Have a great day.